Alright you guys, today we'll take a look at how to expand storage capacity by adding hard drives to your NAS. Now this is a Synology and you may be thinking that we just have to pop this in and away we go. Now not all NAS drives are hot swappable. This one is hot swappable, but I would advise you to turn it off just in case yours isn't. Otherwise you're going to end up uh, messing up your system. So all you need to do is power down uh, the NAS drive so we can insert the new drive and then we can power it on. Just remember the drive has to be either the same size or bigger than the smallest drive in the pool. So that's what we've got here. So what we're going to do is we're going to get a hard drive and we're going to uh, remove this once it's turned off and insert our new drive. And then we can power it on and set it all up. Now, before we expand the storage pool here, we need to run a smart test on each of the drives. Uh, this does take a very long time. But we also need to make sure that these drives don't have any faults on them uh, or any sort of corruption. If they do and they've got bad sectors on them, then you need to start thinking about replacing uh, that drive. So I won't bore you with that part of the process because it does take a long time. Uh, but if you do want to see that part of the process, then let me know in the comment section. I'll make a separate video on that. So I've now pulled out the uh, drive uh, cage here. So what I'm going to do, this is a tallest design. Just need to snap these off on the side. And again, this is a Synology NAS, and uh, you can see the model number down there on the bottom below the power button. And uh, what we're going to do is we are going to insert the drive into it and line up the holes and then put in uh, the holding uh, clips here. So let me just go ahead and put this in. Now, this drive has been used before, and that's important to know because if you are using used drives, you have to remember that the drive has to be healthy and in good working order with no real major problems like bad sectors because expanding the RAID pool is very hard on all of the drives uh, in the actual existing uh, RAID pool. So you want to be very careful when you're using uh, used drives or drives that are failing because this is a really hard time for the drive when it has to rebuild the RAID array. And what can happen, you can end up with a fouled raid pool or even a failed drive during the rebuilding process and this can be you know bad for your data you can end up losing data so also that moves on to the next part which is it's important to make sure that all the data on your nas is backed up or at least all of the important data on your nas is backed up remember your nas is not really a backup of your data it's important that you back up that and I'll make another video on that subject uh, as well for you uh, because I've been neglecting uh, the backup process on this NAS and I need to get back to some sort of backup plan so I'm going to be starting to do that in some other videos if you're interested in that then let me know in the comment section I'm now powering it on and it's uh, detecting the drive as you can see there it needs to establish the drive and get ready and then I'll take you over to the desktop of the uh, NAS so we can set it all up because we still quite have quite a bit to do uh, to get this ready. So it's definitely important that you uh, check the drives to make sure they're all running normal and everything is okay. You don't want to just be adding the drive uh, and then adding it to your, um, your storage pool and then just going about your business. You want to make sure that all the drives are functioning properly. So you can see now the drive has been detected here and, uh, what I need to do here is check the drive to make sure everything is okay. Uh, I'm just checking to see the other drives as well here. So on the top left hand side here, we do have access to some more information about the drives and I'll show you those in a second, but I can already see that the drives are normal and they are functioning. Okay. Uh, the other drive hasn't been initiated yet. So we need to get this drive initiated here. And if you go to global settings, one of the most important things to have set is the lower the impact of the overall system performance recommended. Make sure that radio button is in there, set in there, because otherwise it's really going to tax the system and uh, you don't really want to be doing that. So you want to make sure that that radio button is in that setting there. So you can see here on the volume of Vault 1 here, we do have our drives that are already functioning right. But if we click on the hard drive and SSD, you'll now see that disk four is not initialized and we need to get this initialized here. And it doesn't tell me whether the drive is functioning normal, but you can see here there is a bad sector on that drive. It's already detected it using the smart detection tool that's built in 
to uh, Synology. I've got it set to automatically check, and it's important that I back out of this and change this drive immediately because this drive is not good to be adding to the storage pool when we re rebuild the uh, RAID array because that could foul at that time and we could end up with major problems. And that is why I wanted to leave this part in the video so I could show you before you start jumping the gun and, you know, adding drives to your uh, RAID array and storage pool because you could end up having a bad drive like this and then continuing uh, to add it and then end up with major problems and it could fail and you could end up losing all of your data. So you can see here, this is the drive here, the Western Digital uh, drive here. Now, I'm not going to use this drive, but I just wanted to go next here just to show you the warning message here. Please note the following regarding the selected drive. Uh, not listed on Synology product compatibility list, and that's because it's been ripped out of a Western Digital uh, My Home Cloud and also contains bad sectors on drive four. So that is the drive that we're going to be not using. So they're recommending that we replace the drive, and that's exactly what I'm going to do. And you should do the same if you see any sort of warning messages popping up before you start rebuilding uh, the RAID array. So definitely do that. So now I've swapped out the drive with a new drive, and uh, you can see here drive 4 has been replaced with uh, an identical Seagate drive, a uh, 4 terabyte drive. So we're going to add this now and go to Actions and then add in a new drive for storage expansion here, and that's exactly what we're going to do. So here we go here so storage pool one we're going to add it to our initial uh, storage pool so let's go ahead and click on the uh, drive four and we can now click next and you should see no error codes here because this is a brand new drive so this is what we've got here expanded capacity click apply and then it's going to warn us about the data being erased on this newly added drive so make sure that if it is a used drive and there is data on there, it's not going to save it. It's going to erase it also, you know, back all your data up. Also, like I've said before, always back up your NAS uh, before you go ahead and add any new drives on here because it is quite taxing to the system and does take quite a bit of time. And I'll be making a video on hybrid backup as well. So stay tuned for that uh, video. So it's now starting to uh, prepare the drive ready for our use. So this is going to take some time, as you can see here, add in drives, and it's got 0.0.1%, so time left one day, seven hours. So it's going to take a good day or so to get this added to the storage pool. So it's not as simple as you think, like just adding a drive in and, and then it's all ready to use. Now, you can still use your NAS uh, within reason, as long as it's not taxing it too much, because it is working away rebuilding our storage pool and RAID array. So just bear that in mind. Now we're using uh, the Synology Hybrid RAID, which is your SHR uh, RAID setup. So that's what we're using here. And again, once this is all complete, we should have uh, more storage available to us on uh, this uh, NAS drive. So that's basically going to take some time. So bear that in mind, all the other drives are normal. And you can see the other drive is showing up normal now, which is the drive we added. So it is in good working order and good health. So that's important. So like I said, uh, just sit back and let it do its thing. You may hear it whirring away in the background. Uh, that's because it's working away and rebuilding. So be patient. And this will also take a fair bit of time, depending on how many drives you've got in your NAS and how much data is on uh, those drives and also how large uh, those drives are so obviously if they are like 10 12 14 terabytes or more they are going to take some time and it could take a couple of days depending on how much data you've got and how large uh, the drives are so bear that all in mind as well so these are just four terabyte drives so we're now in the next day so it's been one day later or one and a half days and uh, we'll go back and we'll check uh, the uh, drive to make sure that everything is going okay and we can go back into our Synology here there we go and I'm going to go into the uh, storage manager down here you can add shortcuts to your desktop as well and you can see as now completed the drive is in normal mode and it is fully functional and everything has been set I've got more space added to the storage pool which is good and uh, the you can see here I'm just going to click on this here 
everything is working okay. I can check all these drives which I've done and all the drives are functioning okay. There's no bad sectors on any of these drives. If you want to see how to check drives and stuff like that, then let me know in the comment section and I'll be happy to make that video for you. And uh, if you haven't got a NAS um, or network attached storage as it's known, then you should really consider getting one because they are super awesome for storing data and also sharing data with friends and family and also yourself. You can access them all across your network, anywhere around your home. And again, you can build your own as well, but that's out of the scope of this video. And uh, if you want to see one of those videos, then let me know also in the comments section. Anyway, my name has been Brian from brightechcomputers.co.uk. I hope you enjoyed it. Big shout out to all my YouTube members who join my YouTube members group. Special shout out to Gary Belts, Mike Bigness, PC Repair Tech, Albert Houston, Marciera, Jedi Buddhist, Geo Sam, Phil's Computer Repair, and Welsh Tony One. I shall catch you tomorrow for another video. Bye for now. Thank you.